I get questions all the time about how to avoid making mud when you're painting watercolour. So in this video I'm going to give you seven ways to avoid muddy colours. When we refer to muddy colours or creating mud on our watercolour paintings, we mean we've lost the vibrancy that watercolour paintings are renowned for. The colours on your painting might appear dull, lifeless or lacking in vibrancy. So how do you avoid that? Well, I'm glad you asked because I'm going to run through a number of things that you can do to stop it from happening. The first way to avoid creating mud is to not mix too many pigments together. Try to limit your palette. Choose colours that are single pigments. Most colours have single pigments, but there are some that are made from more than one pigment. Colours such as indigo or sepia are made from multiple pigments. The pigment codes are usually listed on the paints themselves. If you use tubes and you look carefully on the back, you might see the pigment codes listed. If you can't, then go online to the paint manufacturer's website and you can look it up. When I mix, I try not to use any more than three pigments in the one mixture. Number two, get to know the colour temperatures of the paints you're using because the temperature bias of colours can affect the colours that you mix. I've dedicated a whole video to temperature bias, so make sure that you have a look at that. Let's say you want to mix a green. Green is a cool colour. If you mix a cool blue with a cool yellow, you'll get a vibrant green. Okay, this is transparent yellow, which is a cool yellow. Into that, I'll mix some Antwerp blue, which is a cool blue. And that should give me a beautiful, vibrant green. Let's have a look at that on the paper. Okay, now I'll use Indian yellow, which is a warm yellow. And I'll mix that with some Antwerp blue again, which is cool. And that will give me a green, but not as vibrant as the previous green. That second green is okay if that's what you want on your painting. But if you were after a more vibrant green, then mix it from two cool colours. So knowing the temperature of your colours can help you avoid mixing dull colours that you may not want on your painting. Check out that video I mentioned. I'll link to it in the description for you. A good tip I can give you is to work out the colours you want to use on your painting before you start and then do some colour swatching. Mix the colours you've chosen together in different ratios and make a little colour chart for yourself. If there are any colour mixtures that are jarring or dull and they don't appeal to you, then maybe rethink your colour choices. It might have something to do with the temperature of the colours that you've chosen. Okay, this is tip number three. Another thing to watch is that you don't overmix your colours. Instead of mixing them together really well, try giving them a quick swoosh together on the palette and then let them mingle together on your painting when you work wet on wet. You'll get that lovely paint separation that helps to add life to your paintings when you do that. Okay, here's another way to avoid mud. Complementary colours, when mixed together, make gorgeous greys. Complementary colours are those colours that are opposite one another on the colour wheel. So yellow and violet, red and green, blue and orange. I'll paint some yellow onto my paper here and I'll get a little bit of Windsor violet as well. So when they touch one another, I'll get a grey area. And that might be okay if I want that to happen, but there might be times when I don't want it to happen. So here's some red and here's some green. So when those two complementary colours touch, I get a sort of a brownie grey colour there. Sometimes if you mix them on your painting without realising, you might get some grey areas that you don't want, so be aware of that. 
is another way. Opaque colours. Opaque colours have a tendency to increase the risk of mixing a muddy or dull colour. When you mix an opaque colour into a watercolour mixture, it might make the mixture appear dull and less vibrant. Opaque pigments tend to overpower the transparent pigments. So let's say I want to mix a green. I'll start with French ultramarine, which is a transparent colour. And I'll add some transparent yellow, which is transparent as well. And that gives me a lovely, fresh, clean looking green. If I didn't want it quite that bright, maybe I could put some Naples yellow in it to tone it down. But Naples yellow is an opaque colour. And when you mix it with the transparent colours, it tends to dull the mixture down quite a lot. So there it is there. You can see it's more of an earthy green. I think one of the issues that I had with the landscape paintings that I attempted a few weeks ago was because on a few of them I used Naples yellow, which is opaque. On this area here, I fussed with the paint too much and you can see it's become quite dull. To tell whether the pigment you're using is opaque or not, look on the labelling on the tube if you're using tubes and you should see a little square. If the square is solid or blackened, then the pigment is opaque. Here's another way to avoid mud. Try to keep your palette clean. I know some artists like to paint with a dirty palette and that's fine. They probably know what they're doing. But if you were just starting out, I think it's a good idea to clean your palette between paintings. Doing that will minimize the chances of you dipping into colors that might muddy your fresh mixes. Another thing that some artists say is important is to make sure that your water is clean. I change my water if it's dirty when I want to wet the white areas of the paper because I want to keep them pristine before I put the paint on. But I don't often change the dirty water because I think it's going to muddy the colours that I mix. I use a big bucket of water when I paint. This one here holds over three litres. I see other artists painting with little tiny water jars and I often wonder how they cope with that. So it doesn't hurt to use a large water container. I often paint with a second container of water as well. When I'm mixing, I'll wash my brush in one of them and then when I'm painting, I'll use the other one to wash out my brush between colours. Here is the final and what I think is the most important way to avoid making muddy paintings. Whenever you are painting, you must make sure the previous layer is completely dry before you paint over it. As well as that, paint delicately and try to minimise the amount of brush strokes that you use. Use a good size brush if you can so that you can limit the amount of times you paint over an area. I think this is the major reason why a painting will become muddy, because you fuss with it too much. You disturb those underlying layers because you're dabbing at your paper too much with your brush. My technique of painting requires a lot of layering, but I don't often make mud. Even when I think my paper is dry, I'll blast it with a hairdryer for a few minutes just to make sure that it is. Then I'll start painting, but I try to paint delicately with really soft brushes, and I think that helps. I hope you found the information in this video useful. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments some of the things that you do to help you avoid creating muddy areas on your paintings. Make sure you join us on Patreon if you want to learn how to paint in this beautiful medium. I'll see you next week. Testing one, two, three, four, five. Once I caught a fish alive. Where? Good. Number two, get to know the colour temperatures. That second green, I hope it's all right. Then mix it from, oh, why can't I say then mix? Wait a minute. I've done something wrong. I might only have six. Excuse me. Do I do that again or not? 
Tamam, çömecirgen. <gülüyor>